Okay, 12. Now let us look at the solutions to question 3. So question 3, it says you are given a geometric series, which is 3 plus 6 plus 12 to the n terms. Write down the general term of this series. Calculate the value of k such that k, we have a sigma notation there, we have k there, we have p equals to 1, and we have the general term in that case, which is 3 over 2 and p. It's called 98,301. So let's now look at the solutions to this activity. They said now we are given a geometric series. Give a, um, write down the general term for this. Remember, geometric series Tn it was a times r to the power n minus 1. Then we know that a it is the first term. Our first term here is 3. Then we know that r, we must find our r there. So we we'll get r from dividing the two. So uh, this divided by that, so in saying 6 divided by 3, we get a 2, that's our R. Then 12 divided by 12, we get a 2. So R in this case is 2. So now how are we going to get that? So A is 3 and R is 2. We just substitute into our general term, which is a Tn equals to A times R to the power N minus 1. So in the space of A, we now substitute the 3 there. Then the space of R, we now put in the 2. Then we multiply, a. Uh, then that is the general term that we have. So that's our general term of this series. Calculate the value of K such that K is giving us 98,000. So what do we do? First thing that we do is that we are given the general term here. We're going to use the general term to find the series for this, right? Already they gave us the series, but I'm just going to confirm if this is uh, the correct one or the same one. It is 3 over 2 to the power 2 multiplied by 2 to the power, what is P? P is the first value, it's 1 to the power 1. So what are we going to have in this case? This and that will cancel out years. The first term in this will be 3. Let's look at the second term. So term number 2, what are we going to say? We're going to say 3 over 2 to the power 2 into 2. So we are looking for the second term in that case. So what we'll have now is, uh, this will give us 4. So 4 divided by 2 is 2, then 3, 3 times 2 is how much? 6. So the answer will be 6. So T3 will have 3 over 2, 2 to the power 3 now. Then what we have, we now will have the following. 2 to the power 3, it will give us 8. 8 divided by 2 is 4. 4 times 3 is 12. So this is 12. So this is correct. So we have, we write them down there. So the series is divided by 3. This is the first one we found. 6 which is the second one we found. And 12. So what we do? First thing that we do when we are seeing sigma notation. What we do? This, remember, it gives us our general formula. So this is general formula. What will this help us do? This will help us find the series that we're supposed to work with. Then P is equals to 1. So this tells you where you are starting. Where am I starting? I'm starting at 1. So that means to find the first term, you say 3 over 2 times 2 to the power. In the space of P, now we put 1. To the power 1, we get 3. Then we find the second term. What we now do? We now say 3 over 2 times P, which is the general term that we have in there. Um, we say now in the space of P, we put 2 because we're looking for the second one. So we've got 6 as our answer there. Then we proceed to get the third one. So our third one in this case, it will be 3 over 2 again times 2 to the power P. Our P is now 3 because we're at the third one. Then we have that as 12. So that is fine there. Now in this case, what are we having now? We're looking for the value of K. Remember, Sigma notation already tells you, it already talks about sum of. When we talk about a sum of, in this case, we are now looking for all of this edit. So they said the sum of them is 98,301. So already our SN there is 98,301. N is supposed to be here according to our sigma notation. Then N is equals to 1, right? Then what we have now, our value of A, 3, and our R. can now find R here. Our R will be 2 because 3, 
6 divided by 3 is 2. 12 divided by 6 is 2. Thereafter, because now we are looking for the value of k, but we are given Sn. So we're going to use the Sn formula in this case. So we'll say Sn is equal to a into r to the power n minus 1. Uh, all divided by um, r minus 1. So in the space of Sn, we have the value of Sn. It's 98,301. It's equal to a. a is 3. We have a as 3 there. Into our r. Our r is 2 to the power. is 2. Then our n. n is k. So it's going to be 2 to the power k. A minus 1 all over those. So that's what we have there. So a, our l. The value of r there is 2. Then to the power k. So k is our n, in this case, minus 1. Then we solve for k in this case. So what we do from there? Now to find this a uh, k, what we now do is 2 minus 1 is just 1. So just leave it like that. So we have divided uh, that side and that side by 3. Then to minus 1. So in this case, what we would have done is, we would have said 98,301. We we'll divide this by 3, you will remain with in this case, we're remaining with um, 2 to the power k minus 1. Then you say uh, 98,301 over 3 divided by 1 or minus 1 because the 2 to the power k. Then that's what we have in that case. We get 32,767 in that case. So what do we do? We break down according to the loss of exponents. Now what we now have, we have 32,768, then that breaking down, when you break it down, we have 2 to the power 15. So that's what we have as a result in that case. Then we can see now the bases are the same, we equate the exponent. Then our value of k, it will be, so our value of k in this case, k will give us the value which is 15 for that one. Or you can have just used a log when you put um at this case. Um here. Could have just used a the log, then you know that our base is gonna be base two, then k is cost to 32,000, like that, and you find that k is cost to 15. Right. Now let's look at number three. Number three is a very interesting one. Now on number three, we are told the following: given a geometric and arithmetic uh, sequence. We have the same first term, okay? They both have the same first term. The common ratio, our R, so our R in this case, is given as 1 over 3. The common difference for arithmetic, what is 1? It's D. Now, sum to 22 terms of the arithmetic sequence is 734, more than sum to the infinity of the geometric sequence. Calculate the value of the first term. So what are we told in this case? We are told that we are given arithmetic and the geometric series. So what we're doing, what are we told there again? They all have the very uh, the same first term in this case. And we're told that this is sum to infinity for the geometric one. So that's why we are quoting the sum to infinity formula there because we are told that this is sum to infinity. Then what we do from here? What we now do is the following. We check, okay, we have A, A is the same thing, but we don't know what is A. We have sum to 22 terms for the arithmetic. So N, we have N for arithmetic, so we have the following. We have N, which is 22. We have the D, which is how much? Which is 3. Substitute those things. We have N is 22 over 2. Close bracket. We have open bracket, I mean to say. 2a plus this is 22 minus 1. Just give us 21 into 3. Then what you do? 22 over 2 is 11. It's 11 times 2 is 22 again. A. Then we have 622 multiplied by 21 minus 22 minus 1 times 3. We get 693. So the sum to 22 is that one which is now S22 is equals to 22A plus 693 already. 
we are given in the two days. So in the space of N, we put 22 as we did. Now, we're going to come to some two. Uh, we come to some to infinity. So what we do then in that case? So what we now have some infinity equals to A over 1 minus R. So what we do from there is that sum to infinity is equal to A. We don't have A. Over 1 minus R, we have it there is 1 over 3. Then what we get? We just solve there. Simplify what we have. Then we have sum to infinity equals to 3 over 3 over 7. Right. Now to proceed, we are told that this sum to infinity, in this case, we were told that it is smaller than 34 more than the, the sum to 22 terms of, of the arithmetic sequence is smaller than 34, 34 more than the sum to infinity of the geometric sequence. So for us, for them to be equal, what do we now do? This arithmetic sequence already, this one that we have, S22, it's equal to 22A plus 693. It is already more with 734. So what do we now do? We say, okay, from our sum to infinity, we'll now say 3A over 2 plus 734. Why are we doing that? We are doing this so that we can be able to equate the two, so that they are equal. Because this is more with 734. What are we supposed to do? We come to the sum to infinity. We also make it more with the 734. Thereafter, now because this is uh, this says it is more with 734, we can now equate them. They are now equal. So this sum to 22 terms. So sum to 22 will now equate it to the what? Sum to infinity. So our sum to infinity is going to be that. Then sum to 22, we have it there. Then we say it's 22a plus 693, which is the sum to 22 terms. It's equal to the sum to infinity, which is what? 3a over 2 plus 734. Now that they're equal, we now solve for a. Then we solve for a, we get a is equal to 2 in that case. Now, we're going to focus our attention to question 4. Now, question 4 talks about functions. Question 4 and question 5. We'll just have a quick um, overview of how functions look like. We have a straight line, and here we gave it, or we have it when we're given two points, and we're given what a gradient, a gradient and one point. That's how we find a straight line. We're given a parallel line perpendicular for the line equation is determined by one point. We have domain is an element of real numbers, and range is an element of real numbers. It's a straight line, so it just goes all the way there. So x is going to continue that and y continues that way x another way um x continues that side x continues this side and the y values they go in that uh, fashion right we go to number two number two it says quadratic function we look at quadratic function we are given two formats we have the one of the turning point format and we have the other one which is just in the standard form turning point format we know that a y is equal to a into x plus p close bracket all squared plus q. Then our turning point will be this and that value. However, this one will take it with the negative. It's going to be negative um, p and q. Axis of symmetry in this case it's going to be one one negative p in that case. Then the minimum and the maximum value y is equals to q so the y intercept already is given as that oh yes the y is a q in that case then we proceed when we are given this into in a standard form what we do now we use that equation of x of symmetry to find what the x value of the turning point so when you're looking for a turning point in that case you'll use that when negative b it will be that value coefficient of x there, then all over 2a, then our a, it will be the coefficient of x squared, then we find the x value of the turning point, substitute that x value of the turning point into the original, we now will get our, we will now get our uh, y value of the turning point. Derivative, we have a derivative y prime x, so we derive this multiplied by that, a 2 multiplied by a, we're going to get 2a, 
x, q minus 1 is just 1 plus b. So that is why we get our derivative. We can see now that the derivative of a parabola gives us a straight line. When it gives us a straight line, we can see that this will now give us uh, mx plus c. This will now give us the value of m. We proceed and we'll discuss that later on. The hyperbola, so when you're working with hyperbola, it's very important that we look at number one, the equations of the asymptotes. And when we talk about the equations of the asymptotes, that way our hyperbola cannot charge, it can only approach. So it cannot intersect with the equations of the, or when, uh, with the lines of asymptotes. So what we have there, x cos negative p, so this will give us our x, our x intercept uh, asymptote, which is our vertical asymptote, which is cutting on the x axis. So that is what, uh, that's what we have in that case. So this will give us the following. So what we'll have in that case is the following. We'll now have a certain value there, which is x. So the asymptote will maybe go like that. So that's why we say it's vertical. It passes through the x axis, but it's vertical in that case. Horizontal, y and q is horizontal. It's cast, cutting on the y axis. Now, the line of symmetry with the positive gradient is given as y plus 2, x plus 3. Negative 1 is y plus 2, negative x plus c. Or we can get them from this format. It depends on the format that is given to you. Then we can use that to find the the, uh, the lines of symmetry. Right, we have the domain and the range because this is now a hyperbola. A hyperbola, remember, it is the one that is drawn in that way. So it is continuous for x and y, continuous for x and y, except hyperbola, it is not defined at the asymptote. So domain, x and element of real numbers where x cannot give us the uh, vertical asymptote there. So that means we do not have a value on the vertical asymptote. It's defined everywhere, but except for the asymptotes. For the range also, it is defined everywhere except for the asymptotes. So these are our asymptotes. Then we have exponential function. Our exponential function is given as y is equals to a times b to the power x plus p plus b plus q, where b is greater than zero and b cannot be a one. Now, it is one asymptote, it's y equals to q. So this q value then will give us what we call an asymptote in that case, which is the vertical asymptote. Domain, x and the element of real numbers, because we have the y asymptote, then the range will have to, uh, will have the, the our equation will be above this asymptote for the range part, as we have that asymptote. If we had the asymptote maybe on the domain, then we're going to have uh, our x as an element of real numbers, not uh, um, passing that um, one asymptote that we have in that case. Right. So that's what we are dealing with there. Now, let's move on. And we need to work with um, inverses. Invest, when you're dealing with an inverse, you swap the y and x, make y the subject with the formula, then you'll be able to graph the given function. It's reflected about y is equals to x. So that is the line. So that is the reflection for all the inverses. Then we have the straight line and the inverse of the function also. We follow all of those steps to say swap x and y, make y the subject with the formula, and find a new equation. Now we look at the parabola. Uh, the parabola, we can see that when we now make an inverse, it doesn't become a, a what? A function. Because it's going to go like that when you get something like that. And the moment when you use the vertical line test, it touches twice. Then this cannot be a function. How do you make it a function? You must restrict it. When you restrict, you will either have it going this way or it will go that way. So it will depend on the restriction that we use. So we restrict the domain of the inverse of a parabola so that this inverse of the parabola, it becomes what? It becomes a function. Now we now proceed to say domain is 
x is greater than zero and x is less than zero. We now move on. We now go to exponential. Exponential, we have y is equal to b to the power x. Then the inverse, we stop, and we now see the exponential is going to give us a logarithm. Um, it's going to give us the function in terms of a log. And this function, it will be a function unlike the parabola. Right. Now, now grade 12, you will be given uh, seven minutes to complete the activity that we have beside you. Right, uh, welcome back, graduates. Now, let us go through the solutions of this activity. So, question four We are told that sketched below it is the graph of f at x is equal to 2 to the power x minus 4 for x an element of negative 2 and 4. A and b are respectively a y and the x intercept of f. So, what we have there? We have the graph, it is plotted, uh, it's already sketched for us. Then we can see that it is going up to, we can already, if you think about it, our uh, y, remember, it is q. So this is our asymptote. Already our asymptote is given to us. As you can see, this is the value of q in that case. So our value of q for us is negative 4. Right. So what we now have, we have a restriction where x starts from negative 2. So our domain starts from negative 2, including negative 2. That's why this one is a shaded. And then the negative, the positive 4 there, it is not included. Now we proceed. 4.1, they say, write down the equation of the asymptote of F. Determine the coordinates of B. Determine the equation of K, a straight line passing through A and B in the form of Kx. Now calculate the distance between K and X at F and X equals to now, what are we doing now? They said write down the equation. Okay, this is the second part. Now, I will give you this one after we go through the solutions. Let's go through the solutions for the first three questions. Now, going through the solutions for the first three questions, what are we told? We are saying write down the equation of the asymptote. Now, remember, this is our Q. So, Y is equal to Q in this case. So, our Y is what is negative 4. From this equation, this is the value we're talking about. You can't just say it's negative 4 because they said the equation. So when they say the equation must be in terms of y, it's equals to something. Now, number 4.2, it says, determine the coordinates of b. Now, how would you find the coordinates of b? The coordinates of b, where is b? b, it is the x-intercept of our function. In this case, to find b, we'll say, x intercept let y be zero so what are we going to say x intercept y is equal to zero then when we proceed we say in the equation that we have f and x y is equal to 2x minus 4 which is just our equation there for that function it's equal to then we say substitute y is equal to zero so whenever there is y you put zero we we'll substitute y is equal to zero what you remain with we now say transpose this 4 to the other side, so it becomes 4, it's called 2 to the power x. When we are here, we apply the laws of exponent. What do we now have? We will now have 2 to the power 2, it's equal to 2 to the power x. We have the same basis, we drop the exponent, then x is equal to 2. Or we could have just utilized the logs here. Now, when you use the log, you will say x is equal to log. This will be base 4 and a 2 there. Then you get that value. Then our B, because this is x intercept, y is equal to 0. Then the y value of B is equal to 0. Then B, it will be how much? The 2 in that case. Right. Now looking at 4.3. 4.3 says determine the equation of K, a straight line passing through A and B in the form of K, X. Now, first thing that we're supposed to do, they said the equation of k, so k is passing through here. So there's a straight line 
let us passing through those two points. So we're looking for that straight line. We already have the coordinates of B. So our B, it was uh, 2 is to 0. So we need to find the coordinates of A again so that we are able to find the gradient. Remember, this is a straight line. So the straight line in this case is Y is equal to MX plus C. So that's what the straight line will give us in this case. Now, so what we do need to find, we need to find the value of M. So how do we find M? We must use those two points. So that's why we must find the coordinates of A first. Now, how would we find the coordinates of A? A, it is the y-intercept of our function. So what are we saying? y-intercept, let x to be 0. Then what we do now, in our equation, we substitute where there is x. So if y is equal to 2x plus or minus 4. Then y-intercept, x equals to 0. So where there is x, I put 0. So that's why we have the 0 there. Then minus 4, put everything in the calculator. We get the y value. So it's y intercept. So the coordinates of A will be 0. X is 0 here. As we mentioned also here. Then our y value is negative 3. And B is B is what is 2 and 0. So we now have two points. So with the two points that we have, what can we do? We cannot find the gradient because we need to find the gradient also there. To find the gradient, it's what? It is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So in this case, the gradient here, we had y2 minus 1, y1, all over x2 minus x1. So that is how we find our gradient. So our y2, it's maybe the equivalent of b there. It's our 0. So a, I'm just find the a1, 0, 0, and negative 3. So what we have there, our b, y value of b is 0 minus y1 is negative 3 all over x2, the x value, the second x value is 2 minus 0 in that case. So which is what we have in this case here. Then our gradient is 3 over 2. Now, we are looking for a straight line equation. So y equals to mx plus c. Now, we already now have y it's equal to, so in this case, we now have y, it's equals to m, we have it now, is 3 over 2, x plus c. So we need to find c. How do we find c? We're going to substitute a point. So which point are we going to substitute? Either a or b. So any of the two will be fine with us to find the c there. So now how would we find c in this case? We'll now say, let's substitute b. Substitute B, which is 2 and 0, because the straight line is passing through B and A. So A new of the two. We can either substitute B or A. Then what do we now have? Y. So in a space of Y, you put 0. It's equals to 3 over 2x plus what is what? Uh, um, our x value, it's 2. We have x value plus C. Then we solve for C. The, this this cancel out. Uh, then C is equals to 3. Then we now have KX is equals to 3X. K and X now is going to be what? 3 over 2X minus 3. The 3 that we got there, it's our C. It was negative 3. That's what we got as our C. So that's how the equation is. Uh, that's the equation that we're having in that case. 4.4. Uh, we know that calculate the distance between k and f at 1. x is equal to 1. So what do we do now? So we substitute x is equal to 1 in both k and f. So we do have k now. We remember our k and x was given to us as 3 over 2 x minus 3. Then we also had we now substitute 1, so x is equal to 1 because we are saying at 1. So the distance at 1, so this was 2, maybe 1 is somewhere there. So that is 1. Remember there's a straight line there. That is going through those two points. So at 1 there, 
So now we know that the value of uh, y is negative 3 over 2 at that point. Then we do the same thing. We substitute x equals to 1 in f. So when there is 1 in f, I put what? I put I put 1. Where there's x? Now we see that where there is x, we're saying f at 1 it's equal to 2 to the power x. So our x in this case was what? Was 1 minus 4. Then now I get the corresponding value as y. So the vertical distance. So this is what they're looking for. Remember, the straight line was moving through these two points. So we're looking for the point on k. This is the y value on k. So the x value on k here is 1. Then the y value is 3 or negative 3 over 2. Then we find another value here. So this is where we are. We also found that at one day, the y value on the f at x is what? It's negative 2. So those are the two values that we got. So the y value of our f at x is negative 2. The y value for k is negative 3 over 2. So that's what we did in that case. Then what we do from there? Vertical distance is always the top minus. So it's y top minus y bottom. No need to use the distance formula. We can use the distance formula, but there's no need. Then we get our answer as 1,2 units. Now, now I'll give you them. I'll give you five minutes to complete those two more questions that we had. Um for this question. So this is open for right. So uh, no, this is just uh, how many months? Just five months. So I will give you five minutes to complete these activities in this case. Now, um, welcome back, Rituals. Now, let us look at the solutions for question 4.5. Now, we are told that write down the equation of G. If it is given that G at X is equal to four, uh, F at X plus 4. So, what I'm saying there, the G at X is an equation that is shifted. So, it's F at X shifted 4 units up. So, it's shifted 4 units up. So, it's this same equation. Shifted four units up. This was negative. Uh, this was negative three. This is four, right? So this is negative three, two, one, one, two, three, four. It's gonna be somewhere there. So that's what we're looking for. We're looking for the g and x there. So the equation that's gonna pass through there. So what are we saying? So the g and x we're saying is f and x plus four. That means we'll cut down the f and x. Now what we do from f at x to get g at 4, uh, g at x, we add the 4. Because this, this is what the statement says, add 4 to the f at x to get the g at x. So the very same f at x we had, what are we going to do? We add 4 to it. Now when you add 4 then, you see that uh, from our f at x to get g at x, now we're saying 2x, 2 to the power x minus 4 plus the 4, then we get g at x. Then j and x is equal to 2 to the power x because this and this to give us 0. Then we know it is also true for the same. So it is true for the same restriction, which is the same to me. 2 to the power 2n and a 4 in that case. So the 4 is not included, so we're going to use an open bracket or a round bracket in that case. So that's what we have here. So to say, to find jet x, they said add uh, 4 to the f at x. We get the 4 f at x formula or the equation. We just add the 4, then we get the gn x. That's what they wanted us to do. Now they say, write down the domain of g at x. But remember now, we have g at x already. So to find the domain of g at x, what are we going to do? The domain of g and x, it will be from the range of g. So to find the range of g, we're going to use this domain we already had there. 
So, what is the range then? Remember, these are coming from each other. So, that what we have in this case, we we'll say uh, g at x, it was given as 2 to the power x. So, that's what we have in that case. So, to find this, we are going to substitute on what? On the equation there to say, okay, we'll substitute our domain to find the range for the g at x. Now, to find the range for the g at x, what are we going to do then? We'll now say substitute negative 2 and 4. So the first value will now say g at x is equal to 2 to the power x. Then we'll now say it's g at. So what is the x value there? First x value we substitute is negative 2, which is 2 to the power negative 2. So this will give us 1 over 4. So that is the first x a value that we're going to get as our range. Then we go and find the second x value. Now, the second x value will say the same thing. On the g at x, it's equal to 2 to the power x. We now substitute what? We now substitute the 4 there. So we now say put 4, we get 2 to the power 4, which is how much? 16. So that's why the range of g, it will now give us it will give us what? Why is an element of 1 over 4? So we have 1 over 4 there is to 16. Where do we get 1 over 4? We took the one that we had, the domain, we substitute those values into our new equation, which is our g, then we get our range. Remember now, the range, remember what we have is the following. So the range that we have for the g at x, will now become the domain for the inverse. So for the inverse of the same, it will be a domain. So what we do now, just change here. So we just change the x becomes the y. So the y that we had there, it will become the x. So it's for the same values. Or remember, 16 is not included. So in the 16 part here, it's just have an open bracket because 4 was not included initially here. So the 16 there is not included. And what we now have in this case, we'll now say, okay, that is our domain. Or we can now write it that way to say 1 over 4 uh, equals to or greater than x. So we know that we have 1 over 4 on our left and we have the 16 on the other side. So that's what we do to find those two. Now, we said write down the equation of g in the form of y is equal to so what is g this is the inverse now how do we find the inverse we now know that g at x we know substitute that is going to be y equals to 2 to the power x first thing that we're going to do is that we're going to swap x and y so when you swap x and y what are you going to have we're going to have x is equal to 2 to the power y so in the space of x in the space of y i now have x in the space of x i now have y then you solve for y in this case. Then when you solve for y, what do you do? You can use the log to bring that, to solve for that y. Then we have the log is equals to. So in this case, how we would do it is to say um, log, then this two will become a base, base. Then we'll have x, uh, it will be our argument then. It's equals to. It's equals to y. So that's how the formula, our equation looks like for the same domain. So we are using for the same domain that we had previous because we did calculate domain in the previous question. Now, controls, I'll give you, uh, let's see. So I'll give you our uh, 10 minutes to complete question five. So for this part only, you will be given only five minutes to copy and write down to uh, answer all these questions from 5.1 to 5.4. Then I'll give you another five minutes to um, complete from 5.5 to 5.8. Right, now let's move on. Second part.
So I'm giving you another five minutes to answer these questions. Right, now, welcome back to the Now, let us now look at today, uh, let us focus on the solutions of this problem. So we are told that the graph of f and x is equal to negative 1 over 2 into x minus 1 all squared plus 8 and g at x is equal to d over x at draw. So you can see that this is a parabola but it's given to us in a turning point form. So remember our turning point form will say f at x is equal to uh, x minus a into x plus p squared plus q. So that's how we have it in this case. So this is given to us in a turning point form. Already we can look at that and see that we can find turning points easily from the equation. The point of intersection, uh, a is the point of intersection. So a it is the point of intersection of f and g. So a point of intersection of f and g is b so the b is where f and g are intersecting the turning point of f and it is also the turning point of f so that's where we're looking at then the graph f and x intercept at uh, zero and negative negative three and zero and five and zero and y intercepts at c so those are the points that we can we have now let us now go through the solutions of this activity. So they say write down the equation, uh, the coordinates of the turning point. They say write down. So what are the turning points of this uh, of this one? They say write down because they gave you the equation in a what in a turning point format. So how do we do it? We know that turning point is what it's negative p is to q. Remember this is our Format that said f at x it's equals to a into x plus p plus q squared them. Right. So you can see that our p it's that one thing, and our q is this one. So we can see that already p it's negative, so it's negative, negative one gives us positive one, and our q is just positive eight as it is there. So our turning point, so we now have the coordinates of P. So our turning point in that case, it's going to be what? 1 and 8. Right. So they're saying, calculate the coordinates of C. What is C? The y-intercept of, so C is the y-intercept of F and X. So y-intercept X is equal to 0. So where does X, we put 0 in that case. So what you do now, in the space of X, we put 0. Then what you do, you solve for y. Then what does y become? Then y is equal to 5 over 15. So we have that c is 0 and 15. So that's what we have, 5.2. Now 5.3, calculate the value of d. What is d? d, we're talking about this situation. d is found on our g and x. Now, what we know about G and X is that they intercept at this point, and we have the coordinates of B. So our coordinates of B, it was 1 and 8. So what we now do, we substitute coordinates of B in G and X. Why? Because G and X also intercept S, or uh, it is found at B. So B also lies on G and X. So what we do, in G and X, then this is Y, this is our X. So what we have there, so we now say, when you substitute B, we're saying Y is equal to D over X. Then what is our Y value in this case? Our Y value is 8, it's equal to D over 1. Then D is equal to how much? 8. So we now have the value of D. Write down the range of G. Where is G? G is an element range. Why is an element of real numbers? Remember? But why is not an asymptote? What is the asymptote? Remember our g at x, it is given as d, our a, d is 8 over x. So we know that this is plus 0. 
So we can see that our asymptote or our vertical uh, horizontal asymptote in this case is zero. So it cannot touch here and cannot touch here. So this is where our asymptotes are. So why is an element of real numbers? But why cannot be zero? So that's the range we have 5.4. 5.5. It says for which values of x will f at x multiply by f at g be less than zero? So we are saying where will when I multiply the two graphs, we'll get a negative value. So remember, the sign will change at x intercept. So where will the change sign change? The signs will change at x negative three, and the other one will change at So those are the points where signs will change. So what do you look at in this case? We're looking at a situation whereby both of them, they will give us less than zero. So they're saying where both of these graphs are less than zero, so they must be below the x axis in this case. So what we now have, now let's check the first one. We see that f at x here, it's negative. So this one is negative and j at x is negative. What do I want? I want a situation whereby when I multiply f at x and g at x, I get what? I get a less than zero, which is a negative and so I must get negative. Negative. So when I multiply the two, I must get a negative. So when I multiply f at x and g at x at this point, I get a positive. So this side, I got a positive. Now let's go to the second part between this and negative three and zero. Why negative prime is zero? Because this we cannot have S zero and it is our asymptote in that case. So what we now have, we'll see that at negative three and zero. So this portion, just go add that position portion again. So between negative three and zero, we see that F at X is positive and J at X is what? It's negative. Now let's see, when I multiply the two, do I get a negative? Yes, I get the negative. So I want this point. So I want the middle point. Then I move on, say, okay, let's look at between zero and five. So F at X is positive, G at X is positive. When I multiply them, I get a positive answer. So do I want a positive answer? No, I do not want this positive answer. So it's out. So I go after five, right? So after the five, they want to see now, G at X is positive, F at X is negative. Do I want this? When you multiply the two, I get a negative answer. Yes, I want them. So that's how we work with this question. That's how we approach it. So less than zero means a negative value. Greater than zero, it will mean what? A positive value. If they said greater than zero, you can see that we have this point and that point. Now, the negative ones, we get this, this one and that one. So that's why we get negative. These two, they gave us positives. So positives, we don't want the positives. We are looking for where we're going to get a negative. Now, let us talk about that distinction there. It is now where x is between 0 and negative 3. So when x is greater than negative 3 or x is less than 0. So that's what we say. We cannot include 0 because 0 is the asymptote in that case. And when you multiply with the 0, we get a 0 answer there. Or x is greater than 5. So we can see this side going that side is greater than 5 or equals to 5. So going that side is greater than equals to 5. This one is between the two values, which are what? Negative 3 is greater than equals to x or greater than 0 in that case. So that's what we have in that case. So what you do in these questions most of the times, they are multiplying. They say when you multiply them, they must give you negative zero, uh, less than 0. It means they must give you a negative answer. So this is negative and negative gives us positive, doesn't work. Negative and a positive gave us negative, it worked. Positive and positive give us a positive, we don't want it. Negative, positive, positive and a negative gave us negative, which is also what we want. Or we can write and say x is an element of, we we'll start here, x is an element of negative 3 is to 0. The 0 that must have an open bracket because we're not including that. So we're including zero or um, x is an element of uh, five. We include the five 
up to positive infinity. Infinity, remember, we always write with a with an open bracket in that case. Now, let us look at uh, question uh, 5.6. Now, 5.6, it says to us, the graph f at x, okay, the same graph that we have here, calculate the values of k so that h at x, which is a uh, h at x equals to negative 2x plus k will not intersect the graph at t. So we're saying we're looking for a situation whereby they won't intersect each other. But we need to find out where are they going to intersect h at x and that. So h at x, we can see there it's a straight line. So we're checking where these two will not intersect. So they'll intersect once at that point. So we're saying they'll intersect so whereby h at x plus k, which is a straight line, um, the intersecting there, it's equals to g at x. Then after, what we do now? We put down the h at x, it's equals to 8 over x. Then what we now have? We solve, we multiply by x throughout. Then we use a discriminant. So we're saying it will not intersect. So when you say it will not intersect, that means the discriminant must be less than 0. Yes. Now, let us look at 5.6. On 5.6, we're saying, we're looking for a point whereby this will not intersect. So they will not intersect when you're using the discriminant to say, this must be less than zero. So that is where they're not gonna intersect together. So what do we do to find that? So we must find where uh, F and, um, H and F and J and F are intersecting. So they intersect at that point. Thereafter, what do we do now in that case? We will now say uh, h and x, we call down the formula of h and x, and the g and x, we call it down again. Thereafter, we solve there. Then we're saying we're going to use the discriminant. So we're saying our discriminant in this case, remember discriminant, it's equal to b squared minus 4ac. Then what we do from that, we now solve for k there. You know, k squared is it's greater or uh, less than. It must be less than zero. Why? Where they're not going to intersect. Remember, when they don't intersect, that means when our discriminant is less than zero, that means we have non real roots. So the roots are non real. When the roots are non real, they're not, we don't have the x intercepts. So in this case, when you say the discriminant is less than zero, we meaning the two will not intercept. That's what we are saying in this case. So let's draw a uh, discriminant. Less than zero means non real roots. In this case, these two graphs will not intersect. Then we now have critical values. This is eight and negative eight. Then they won't intersect at what we do. We solve for that situation where we have k squared minus 64. It's uh, less than zero. Then what we do in this case, we now solve for k. We now we do it different of two squares. Or we can just transpose 64 to the other side. Then we have 8 and 8. So that's what we have in that case. Now, 5.7. H is a tangent to G at R at the point in the first quadrant. Calculate T such that F and X plus T intersect at G and R. So what we're saying is that they said H is a tangent to G at R. So this is point R here. So H, remember H, we had it here. So the h will become a tangent in this case. In the first quadrant, calculate t such that this f and x plus t, it will do what? It will be at r. So that means we are looking for the values of t in such a way that this f and x again, it is shifted so that it gets there. It touches that point. So we are looking for where f and x is going to be shifted so that f and x can also intersect at r. So this is the f and x plus t. So we're looking for that t that allows this to intersect at r, what we have there. So what we do, first thing that we do, we equate the two because that is where the two are meeting. So when you equate the two, we'll now find uh, the, k, the, the, the new equation whereby both of them, they are intersecting. So what we do now, we are saying 
uh, we have the x value there. We substitute x is equal to 2 in our um, y equals to a y over 8. Then we are saying we're looking for the value on the tangent where x is equals to y is equals to 4. So what are we saying to say substitute x is equals to 2 in y is equals to 8 over 4. In this case, from here, we do what we solve for x and you find that x equals to 2. We substitute this value in our g and x, which is y plus 8, 8 over x, then we find the values that we want there. Remember, we are looking for the tangent there. So our tangent in this case is what? Our tangent is 2 and 4. So our tangent, which is this point now, it will be 2 and 4. So how do we find that 2 and 4? 2 and 4, it is where these two graphs were equal. We found the x value. To find the y value, we substitute in any of the equation. So after solving here, substitute in any of the equation, then we find the y value. Thereafter, we now find the tangent point. After finding the point or the tangent point in that case, we now say 4 is equals to, we now divide this thing, y is equals to f at x. What is f at x? Our f at x in this case was 1 over 2 into x plus, so x minus 1 squared plus 8 plus t. So the whole of f at x plus t. So that's why we had the whole of f at x plus t. Then we solve for t there. What we substitute? We substitute, we substitute the tangent, which is 2 and 4. Then we get the value of t. That's the t that we have in that case. Right. Thank you, uh, networks. Now, this is the preview for the next lesson. We're going to focus on part two, where we deal with finance, calculus, and probability. We'll meet again in part two of paper one revision. Thank you.